Thank you, Alistair. Good morning. So the theme of this gathering is making data real. Before you can make data real, before you can analyze it, before you can work on it, mine it, find those nuggets and get true value out of it, you need the data. And in today's connected world, it's very easy to amass a crowd. And crowds are really cool. And they're cool for everything, including collecting data. Crowdsourcing has existed for a while and is growing. We have crowdsourcing for funding. You can use Kickstart, Petri Dish to get money for charity to start a business. You can crowdsource opinions and drive policy. You can crowdsource, <coughs> excuse me, massive distributed data like SETI. And you can crowdsource knowledge and solutions to problems, business, and otherwise like Kaggle. But all of these presume data exists. Where do you get the data? What about crowdsourcing the data? As I said earlier, crowds are cool, and crowds are cool for collecting data. A thousand eyes and hands will make light work of collecting the data you need to make work for you to find those valuable insights. You can crowdsource from specific groups. And there a number of open databases have started to grow. One of them, the, university, uh, the Technical University in Munich, has a prononomics database that invites scientists to submit the results of mass spectrometry on human protein and peptides to build this database. And they've succeeded in getting 92% coverage of the existing human protonome at this point in time. The database also contains some 1,100 lines of cancer cell information in it. And by doing analysis on this complex multidimensional data, you can do analytical hypothesis testing. You can drive drug and diagnosis and treatment forward quickly. But what about the rest of us? I mean, that was a subset of scientists. Rick Smolian, who spoke here last year, and if you get a chance, go back and watch his talk, crowdsourced the project, of which SAP is proud to be one of the sponsors, called The Human Face of Big Data. It's a website. It's an amazing book. It's a soon-to-be documentary. You watch PBS in the coming months. And Rick talked about how we started to move from crowdsourcing solutions to actually crowdsourcing data collection. And he has some really cool examples in his book. One is called Quake Catcher. And Quake Catcher actually uses the accelerometers in mobile devices and in laptops to track tremors. When it's a significant event, it actually signals the servers to filter out the noise of a passing truck or train and can actually track tremors. There is SafeNet, which allows people in Japan to input data on their dosometers. So we get an idea of radiation readings around Japan, a grassroots radiation level reading. We no longer have to rely on comp uh, large networks and sensors supplied by governments whose data may or may not be open. There are a bunch of projects like this that exist. Apps are starting to appear. You can mine Yelp, but it wasn't designed to gather data in the way that flew near you is. Google and Microsoft are driving this. There is iBird Pro, which identifies birds by song and is increasing the accuracy of tracking and bird sightings even by the most novice of bird watchers. There's Whale Spotter, which is used to collect information on blue and humpback whales near the Golden Gate Bridge with the goal of eventually getting rid of collisions between shipping traffic and these whales. And there's the International Barcode of Life, who SAP is helping develop a mobile app for. Their audacious goal is to track the DNA of every species on the planet. So we're in the very early stages of helping them build an app that will allow people to submit specimens, plant and insect, along with detailed information on the specimen for analysis and get the results back, as well as allow them to provide remote DNA uh, analysis into the database. So the next time you're looking at finding data, think about crowdsourcing it. And there are companies 
like SAP, who are more than willing to help you with our team of amazing data scientists. So drop by and say hi. Thank you. <laughs>